hello everyone and welcome to the anime delay and thank you for joining me as we talk about episode 3 of the Railgun T anime series. An episode in where we see balloons being popped with beanbags and we learn that the girls of Tokiwadai will soon be cleaning toilets. This episode was a lot of fun. Having the Mitika clone partake in this event was a really smart choice as it allows us to finally get that small glimpse of them acting like normal high school girls, which is something that Mitika kind of promised them um, after the whole Accelerator ordeal. And I really do like the fact that they're starting to show glimpses of that because this Mitika clone at the end, she was genuinely happy. It also adds to the comedy of the episode overall, and I just love the reference to Accelerator when Mitsuka, like was fighting all those kind of other people from the other schools. She was like, huh, compared to, I've fought over a thousand battles where my life was on the line, it was life and death, so compared to you, this is nothing. And I thought that was really cool. And uh, her running with her hands behind her back, like Naruto running, love it. It was goofy and it made me smile. Um, so yeah, anything like that, always a good thing. It's one of those things where if the real Mitsuka was in this event, it wouldn't be as enjoyable. It's because it's a clone that the clones we know act goofy and silly sometimes that we can just go with it and it just makes more sense and we can just have a good old laugh. Which is why I said it's a very smart choice, um, as well as the other reasons that I just listed above. And to top all that off though, seeing the clone reaction after Mitsuka basically tells her that, you know, you did a good job. That, to me, was just the icing on top. You know, the smile that she gives, just it just says a lot. We know that the sisters look up to the original big sister, Misaka, um, you know, just in general. They want to be like her, um, but also have their own kind of style and personality, which obviously is a good thing, but at the same time, when they get praise, it means a lot to them. And it's something that they all share together, even though they are individual clones. But it again, it just, it made her smile, it brightened up, it put colour into the character's eyes. Which for me, is always a good thing. Because you know what? I like the sisters. I think they're good characters. The twist with Shokoho at the end was very interesting. As it sets up something big to come in the future. And I hope it doesn't disappoint or backfire uh, too much on Shokoho as a character. Shokoho is a character that is slowly growing on me. I'm not going to lie, I like Shokoho. Um, but obviously, this leads me to a couple of questions. Because if I'm being perfectly honest, uh, I would have thought that Shogaho would know about the sisters and would be able to recognise whether it's a clone of Mizuka or the real deal. And a part of me does think she can, but she was actually looking for the clone in the first place. Because... If we look back at the, the events in what the episode shows us in, we see that Mitsuka meets Toma, and then Shogaho comes in. Shogaho has obviously seen the real Mitsuka at that point, because, um, you know, she's teasing her, and Mitsuka uses her Esper abilities. Now, when she sees um, Mitsuka lying on the floor, uh, which is obviously the target that they had in the beanbag game, we know that this clone of Mizuka had the Gekuda mask on and had the cat with her, which if Shogaho had just seen the real Mizuka, she would know that the, um, you know, that Mizuka, real one, original, doesn't have a cat or can't have cats near her because of the EM uh, electric electricity fields that she gives off, something like that. But at the same time, if Shogaho does actually intend to go after the clone, then obviously it makes her a lot more smarter, and uh, it just kind of leads to you uh, wanting to find out what the plan actually is, and what her intentions truly are. So hopefully, we get elaborated on that a little bit sooner rather than later. I'm not going to lie, seeing the girls of Tokudai put in their place um, by the other team was actually really nice to see. To be honest, they were acting kind of stuck up, um, you know, Congo's character is always a bit over the top, a bit extra. But, you know, even the other characters were. And I like the fact that this match even highlighted their um, their weaknesses. And the way they went about, the other team went about kind of taking down the Tokudai female students, I thought was really creative and really smart. They used information they were able to get. Granted, the guy that got the information was solely after Misaka. 
Um, but again, it still uses the other characters to kind of show off some good highlights. Like, for example, the telepathy female. She's scared of spiders, so what they do, they put a spider in front of her face. Um, which obviously, if she's telepathically connected to other people, her screaming is going to basically knock out everybody else, which I thought was super smart and creative. Uh, you've got, like, the girls not wanting to go through the uh, the bog pit, the mud. It's like, come on, really? You can get your shoe dirty a little bit, can't you? That obviously leads to the, 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 the toilet cleaning joke. But, you know, it is what it is. Overall, I thought that was really cool. And to give, like, Tokyo Dai, a prestigious school, a bit of a knockdown never hurts because you can always learn more from defeat than you can from victory. The stuff with Sarten and Uiharu was really nice and heartwarming. I want to see more of those two characters throughout the series and I hopefully we do. I know Uiharu had a time to shine at the beginning of this series and in like the last two Railgun installments but at the same time I just like both of these characters. Uh, Uiharu has continued to improve as a character as the series goes on. Uh, in my opinion, and this episode helped show off that even more. It shows off the bond between Uiharu and Sarsen, and it does this in a very positive light. Uiharu is able to understand the passion and meaning um, that Sarsen would have towards finding this shadow metal. Obviously, this shadow metal is just a rumour, it's something that sh doesn't exist, but the Sarsen, if she can find it, if she can find that, then... You know, she can feel like she's done something achievable, something important. And to her, it's almost like being a level 5. Which, if we go back to the other shows, Sarton wanting to have a powerful ability is something that's always been close to her heart and something she's really wanted. So for Uihara to kind of turn around, analyse all this, and then just kind of go, you know what, fine. It means a lot to you, I'm going to help you out. I think that's great character showcasing. I think that's a good character bond and connection. And uh, overall... I just wish to see more of these. Uiharu in this in this part of the episode was just really sweet, and uh, I'm liking it. Keep it up. Overall, this episode I thought was super fun. Um, although not a lot happened within the episode, uh, it's more of a build-up episode, so setting up for something greater in the future. The animation was really cool, really nice. I liked the animation. Nothing seemed really bad. So, all in all, good on the animation front. The comedy was great, especially when Toma made his appearance. Um, you know, Toma just doesn't have any game or any luck with women at all. And uh, it comes back around to bite him here. But obviously, Shokoho comes in and makes that scene more comedic, which I really do like. Um, even just uh, Mizuka's mother bringing her own cheese fondue, I think that's what it was, into the restaurant. Um, it's something that... I mean, all right, true story. I'd taken a KFC bucket into a McDonald's and sat down on the internet um, just because I was with a group of people. They wanted McDonald's, I didn't. Uh, so I kind of get how her mother is kind of feeling, like she wanted something that that company didn't offer. So she just took it in there anyway. <laughs> it, it, it relates to me. I thought it was cool. But yeah, um, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what happens in the next few episodes. And hopefully... You'll share your thoughts on this episode down in the comments with me as well. If there's anything that I've missed, then uh, be sure to let me know uh, in the comments and we'll have a chat about it. Honestly, I'm open to criticism or open to, hey, you missed this part out, what do you think of it? Because I want to know what you think and I'll be glad to have a chat with you. Other than that though, I hope you have an amazing day. Arigato, matane, goodbye. <laughs>